Alrighty, so I'll share the seeds that I have here. These are uh, butterfly spinach, cer certified organic. Also, if I can find a link to these work pants, I'll link them. They're har heart, they're like work pants. So I can put like all my gardening tools and stuff in here. I thought that was kind of cool. My husband made me get them because in our garden, the big garden, this is the Hugo Culture Garden, it's like harder to lean on because of the rocks. So I guess it's official. I have my first pair of work pants. Okay, so what is succession sowing? So what it means is that you are sowing seeds every two weeks. It's been three weeks since I sowed those mom life but I am at least getting them in every two to three weeks so that I'll have a continual harvest, you know, all the way through spring. So when we're harvesting those, these are coming to maturity and so on and so forth. I think it's better to do it a little bit further apart because you're gonna be picking your spinach off the ends anyway and it's gonna keep growing, the plant's gonna keep growing. So I don't think you can ever have too much spinach. So I'm doing this very simply I'm not using any fancy tools because spinach grows like really good like just all together so what I'm just doing along the top of my heel culture bed so I'm just doing it all along like all the way from there all the way to that side and I won't show you like the whole entire row but um basically I'm just making so on the back of the seats like I showed you in a pre the previous video, I think it was um, the first video I've uploaded recently. On the back, it tells you how deep. This is one third of an inch deep. So that's not very deep. So I'm just doing like a little, just like a little hole, like a little trench. And I'll go all the way around the bed. Hopefully no deer will step in it. I can't guarantee that. At least this year I won't have chickens destroying my garden. Last year I had a chicken that we called Rogue Chicken. We couldn't catch her. <laughs> and she was like living in the woods and she would just come out here and destroy my garden. <laughs> it's not fun. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my seeds and I'm just going to spread them out and try to just kind of space them apart there's enough space between them. You can see the spinach that I planted about two, three weeks ago and it's starting to come up. I love it because my bathroom window is right there so I can look out here and I can see like what's sprouting. <laughs> like brush my teeth and look at the garden and then these are the seeds. You can see so these are the seeds, those are like bigger ones. I just kind of like scatter them. Kind of sprinkle them on. My daughter, who's three, can do, was able to do this too. She planted, my daughter, who's three, planted all these. And so they don't need to be perfect. You can thin them out when they get a little bit bigger or you can just let them all grow together. Either way, I've never thinned out my spinach and it does well. I so wanted to share these peonies we planted these bulbs last spring and they did not sprout. But guess what? They're coming up this year. So I'm really excited. I have some plans for this. My husband's painting the house black, so I don't know if I'll actually take the time to plant anything over here because he's probably gonna have to like, you know, put a ladder in here. But we did plant some bulbs. Lots of peonies coming up. There's another one right there. So eventually I want this to be all pretty flowers, but maybe next spring so that we can get the house painted this spring. Fox gloves. So I'm just gonna, the fox gloves are coming back. I already got some good looking dandelion <laughs> weed right there. And these are my roses. The previous owner planted them. I'm really growing fond of roses. I would like to get more into rose gardening. It'd be cool to turn all of this into a rose garden. Don't you think? Let me know below if you think that's a good idea. I think that'd be a great idea. It gets direct sun all summer. So, when we paint the house black, I'll definitely share how we do that. I'm walking down 
It is an overcasty, rainy day. I also have a lot of landscaping to do here at some point. For now, we just have stuff that's coming up that the previous owner planted. Look how pretty these daffodils are though. I would love to have this whole area filled with daffodils and tulips. So like these mounds, they're all just like random plants. I would love to have it be all daffodils and tulips. One day, they usually get pretty burnt out by the fall with two toddlers. Um, so walking down to the garden. All right see the mountains today usually you can see the olympics these are all blackberries this is where we foraged most of our wild blackberries last year still need to trim those back a bit don't even get one day i'll tell the story of this thing this wall thing <laughs> if you follow me on instagram you know the drama that that was so here we are this is the winter garden It'll be time to fertilize these garlics soon. They're starting to really grow. Let's see. They're getting thicker and thicker. Leaves. I'm excited about the garden situation. I'll link these pots in the comments for you. They're a really good idea. We grew potatoes in them last year. I really like them. It looks like a weed. Yep, it's a weed. Alright, time to start weeding. Everything just wants to grow here. That's like what is on the to-do list in your garden. Here, this time of year, is to keep up with your weeding. Okay, so while we're from my greenhouse, sorry the lighting is so bad in here. I have this little makeshift seed starting situation in my garage. I had this inside last year. But since I have a little bit more knowledge, I figured I'd get it started outside because I feel like it's warm enough with the heat pad. I also had these heat lights. Don't recommend. Melted. <laughs> uh, don't put them close if you're going to use them. But I can always turn those on if we get like a big cold snap. But so far, so good. Wanted to show you what we got going on here. I started these, I know, I think two weeks ago. Um... So as you can see, I'm having different germination rates here. Um, peppers, it's they take a little bit longer to germinate. As you can see, I got a couple coming up there, but none of my peppers are really growing too big right now. I have another one over here that has none popping up, so I'm gonna wait a little bit longer for those. But for the most part, so I think that they had a really low germination rate on these tomatoes, so I'm gonna put them aside for now because I had two pop up with the rest in it and show you the rest of my tomatoes that obviously are really happy. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna thin them out. I'll show you how I do that because I think they need to be thinned out because also my tomatillo, I think I just, I thought that I was kind of low germination rates because these are kind of older seeds. They're a couple years old, some of them. And obviously they're just fine. I'm not too worried about leggy tomatoes because later on when I do plant them, I will show you what to do with leggy tomatoes. Um, but I am going to thin them out because one of the reasons they get leggy is because there's too many in one pod. So I could have done this earlier, but honestly, I've just, you know, been busy. So let me show you how I do this. Okay, so I will start with these. So yeah, this one is a mix of like tomatoes and peppers. As you can see, the peppers are just starting to come up. And the tomatoes have already come up. So the tomatoes, or these are tomatillos. So the tomatillos and tomatoes come up a lot faster. So this one's like super long and skinny and falling over. And so is this one. So those are like, you know, those are kind of weak in my opinion. So I'm going to cut those off. And also we've got this one right here. That's really tall and leggy. I mean, they're all pretty leggy. I'm going to take the top off of them and see if they'll get stronger because the top's not on them. But you would think that you'd want to keep the tallest one. And I actually like to cut off the tallest one for the most part because then, yeah, so that one's not even open yet and it's tall. This is my favorite one right here. 
think that one looks the best. That one's really strong too. I'm going to leave those two for now and then pick between the two. This one, I already got one falling over. I'm going to cut that one off. And we got one coming up right there. So I'm going to cut. I'll leave those two and see what happens. Um, and again with these, I got this really tall one here. So I'm going to cut that off. Cut that one. So I'm just going to keep thinning these out. I'm going to leave a couple and then pick between those two. And I'm just going to do the same. It's going to do the same all the way through like this one. Oh my God, there's so many here. So I'm going to go ahead and just like cut all of these that are already like grown and try to give the ones that are like coming up a better chance to not grow around so many other plants. Same with these. Just going to give them all a chop. And I do not like doing this. <laughs> I'd rather just plant less seeds, but you gotta do what you gotta do. This one is super skinny. Here, I'm just gonna cut that one too. Okay, so that is thinned out. So one down, a bunch to go. I got some nasturtiums and borage here to grow in. So I'm just gonna keep going through. And doing that with all of my tomatoes and then once those are thinned out then I'm just going to leave the tops off um, so that they get more light and they have a little less heat so maybe they grow a little bit slower um, I feel like when there's a lot of heat and the, the domes are on too long they tend to grow too fast and you want the, the stems and the leaves to mature not get too tall, not get too tall. So I'm just gonna keep thinning them out, thinning them out. That's exactly what I came out here to do. Put the bird netting because they have been digging up my pea shoots and my seeds. There you go, a perfect hole. <laughs> so let's get these peas protected because they've started to come up. What did I plant them last week? They're starting to come up so let's get them under some netting before I lose them all I just bought this netting from Amazon I'll link it in the info section and I'm just gonna cut it into sheets that are big enough just to cover right where they planted the peas um, so it won't cover the rest of the bed so unless the, I already planted so the seeds. Birds don't eat your seeds exactly so the birds don't eat my seeds we don't want that yeah. Thing I'm doing too. So this, I put two. This peas. will block my try and grow bigger and bigger. It is. These two peas, um, they're growing up. They're growing up, and there's two of them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take one out of this hole really gently and put it in the hole that the bird dug up one of my peas out of, yeah. and at least fill it up. Wait, wait, baby, baby, let mommy do it. I plant. I'm going to plant it, sweetie pie. Let me, let me plant it by myself. Okay, I'll let you plant it. So let me show them first, okay? okay? So as you can see, like there's the pea and the roots and the shoot. So All right, birds, zero, Amy, one. I reclaimed that spot. So the netting is up. It's not, you know, you can barely see it. I have it on both sides on each bed. I'm gonna go ahead and sprout some more peas because as you can see, <laughs> they got a lot on this side too. So we are protected for now. I think we will see if the netting keeps them away, at least deter them. Um, and like I had mentioned, this spot got hit pretty bad, so I'm going to rethink what I'm going to do. Like, that was just like a last minute thing. I had a bunch of extra seeds that were sprouted. Yeah, baby, give me a minute. And so I just put them there, and they got eaten. So I'm going to go look at my sunflower packets and see when I can plant those out, because there's going to be sunflowers all along the end here. I had green beans here. As you can see, there's still some dead stuff I have to take off the fence, but... The deer ate them so much last year being on the fence. I decided 
Then I'm going to do sunflowers and then plant beans in front of the sunflowers to climb up. So if I have time to have a crop of peas, I will plant more. I'll just go and replant peas all the way down, which I haven't done yet. I just had these. And if not, then I'll just go straight to sunflowers.